Nope. My friend and I always used to walk through a wonderful, spacious park when we were younger. It was full of tall trees and it was very nicely maintained. In this large park, there was an abandoned mansion. I can't really say how long it had been there, but on that day, the front door of the mansion was wide open. The two of us decided to check out what was inside the place. As we inched closer to the door, the very first thing we noticed was that the mansion's floor was littered with crumpled up pieces of paper. We looked at each other and observed that there was no furniture, nothing except those wrinkled balls of paper. The mansion had six rooms on its main floor and every room we entered bore more and more scrunched up pieces of paper. We decided to open up one of the paper balls to see what was inside. Our curiosity got the better of us. I picked up a single wrinkled piece and as my friend picked up another, I unfolded my paper, smoothing out its bends and dents. At that moment, it was almost as if a rainbow emerged before our eyes and I was suddenly standing next to a large window in one of the upstairs rooms of the house. I was looking outside into the large park. When I looked down at the piece of paper I held, it read, Look outside the large window that oversees the park in the upstairs parlor. I dropped the piece of paper and it fluttered gracefully to the ground. Meanwhile, I stared at my open hands in a bout of horror. Dazed and utterly perplexed, I found my way downstairs and met up with my friend. He was in the kitchen, sitting at a round table that hadn't been there before. Where did that come from? I wondered. My friend stared at his open paper and reread the words several times before he looked at me and turned the page away. It said, Go to the kitchen and sit at the round table. We stared at each other for a few moments, vaguely afraid, but then we began to chuckle. Within seconds, we were laughing our heads off marveling at our newfound game. We could hardly believe what had happened, but being young as we were, the mystery was endlessly exciting. We decided again to open up another scrunched up piece of paper. As we opened up the crumpled papers on the floor, we experienced the same sudden flash of rainbow colors but this time I ended up lying down in the field behind the mansion. When I peered onto the paper in my right hand, it read, Lie down in the field behind the mansion. I giggled uncontrollably. After a few minutes of running around the house, I found my friend collecting multiple balls of paper in his arms eager to experience more of these strange, exciting phenomena. We both got the gist of what was happening at this point. We had no idea as to how it was possible, but we decided to have more fun with it. The supernatural always had a way of captivating our hearts. After a few more run-throughs with these strange mini teleportation devices, I began to feel apprehensive. I wondered if at one point I would be placed somewhere I didn't want to be or I'd be made to do something I didn't enjoy. We continued though. Minute after minute, we unfolded many papers and traveled through bedrooms, closets, trees. But then, after having been on the roof of the mansion, I stood before my friend, dead on the living room floor. 
I didn't scream. I couldn't. Murder him, I read on my crumpled page as I felt a surge of vomit and bile rising into my throat. Nothing came out, but the sickness in my throat spread to my stomach, my head, and my heart. I didn't know what to do. At this point, I began to scream and shout, praying to God for this to be a nightmare. I wanted it to go away. I wanted to rewind our day and be outside again, together, walking underneath the trees. All I could do was hide his body in a cupboard. I willed myself to be calm, and I hesitantly unfolded another paper in the hopes that the problem would somehow correct itself. Once again, I saw the colors of the rainbow and I found myself standing behind a tree several meters away from the house. I could barely see the front door, but within a few instants, I saw both myself and my friend walk through that door. I began to wonder if I had died or if I was having some type of out-of-body experience. I looked at the sheet in my hand and the only words scrawled upon it were time will repeat itself and a paradox will take place and it will be allowed that gave me an idea in my pocket remained the paper that made me kill my friend without looking at it i crumpled it back up quietly I followed my other self, who had separated from my friend as he explored the rooms of the house. As I crept behind him, he turned around very suddenly. Before he could utter a syllable, I forced the paper in front of my eyes, and in a flash of rainbow colors, I was able to kill my other self. The laws of time allowed me to take over my dead self's place in this world. Also, because of the fact that it was allowed to happen, as it was written on that second piece of paper. It must have control over time and paradoxes. That control allowed me to be alive and present in place of my dead self. I hid my limp, bleeding other dead self in a cupboard in the upstairs bathroom to rot. To my great relief, I heard my friend call my name from downstairs. My friend who managed to stay alive and well. My best friend. When I went downstairs, he greeted me excitedly, smiling ear to ear and being blissfully unaware of the situation. I pretended that nothing had happened. In a heartbeat, I told him that the house creeped me out and that it would be better if we left. After that day, we never went near that mansion again. I don't know if anyone saw or heard anything that happened between us but I recently heard from another friend that the house had been demolished. And I can tell you with great certainty that while this news is a relief, I dreaded the probable prospect that my corpse was uncovered in the bathroom cabinet. Hello, dear listener. Thank you for joining me for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, smack that like button down below, and remember to subscribe for future videos if you haven't already. This particular story was sent to me via Facebook, uh, so thanks again to, uh, okay, don't be mad if I mispronounce your name, but I think it's pronounced, Olashai? Anyway, I left a link to the original story in the description below if you want to check it out. I did tweak it just a bit for readability purposes. But regardless, remember to leave a comment down below letting the author know what you thought of their work. Until next week, everybody, stay safe out there.
I'll be seeing you in the next video.